Hello and welcome to this video. I've decided after the last video to juice the script up just a little bit more and get some more data. And what I'd like to do is actually run the analysis on lots of pairs and not just one at a time when we type each one individually in the pair name here. So to make a start with that, I'm going to replace this pair name with a currencies variable. And that's just a comma separated string of all the currencies I'm interested in trading. We're going to build it up into a list that has all combinations of these currencies that we can trade. And you'll remember this probably from early on in the course when we saved the instruments data frame. So to do this, we need to build a function that can take in a string separated by commas of all the currencies and give us this list of tradable pairs back. So making some space then above run, we can start writing this function. Now we've seen this code before, so I'll be a little bit quicker probably about explaining and putting this one in. We're going to get the existing pairs that we can trade from our instrument class using the get instruments dictionary. And then we use a little function on the end called dot keys, which will give us a list of the keys of that dictionary. So if I write print existing pairs, we can go down to the bottom to the main and just execute this function. And also give it an argument, otherwise it won't work. So when I run this in the console, you can see that we get a list of all of our tradable pairs back using this class method. So that part's working. The next thing we need to do is actually create our list of pairs that we can trade. To do that, we need the currencies. Now we've got a string coming in here as an argument, which is these here, and they're separated by a comma. And what I'd like to do is break these into a list. In Python, that's a one-liner, which is good. And we can just say a pairs variable is equal to this pair string split by a comma. We can try printing the pairs as well and just check this in the console. And you see down here, we've now got our pairs list separated by comma. And now we need to do, if I just paste the pairs in here, is take this list and loop through these one by one with a nested loop inside and check whether if we build a pair up, it exists in existing pairs. So we'll set up a new variable called test list. And I'm going quickly here because I don't really want to bore you with this. You've seen this kind of thing before. And we can say that we've got four P1 in the pairs and for P2 in the pairs. And then we ask ourselves, okay, is P actually in our existing tradable pairs? And if it is, then add it please to test list. The last thing we want to do then at the end of all doing all this is we can return our test list. And just as a last little check to see this working, we can also print our test list as well. So I'll just make that there, neaten that up slightly. So going back into the console, what you should see then is the list of pairs that we're going to be able to trade. The other thing we can do is remove these prints at the top there, just so that to so running this script, then we can see we end up out of that function with a list of all the possible tradable pairs for the currencies we're interested in. And these are all the currencies that we're going to simulate and then save into a file for analysis. So with that now written, we can go down into run and start changing things a little bit. The first thing is we can use our new function to get ourselves a set of test pairs from our currencies variable. So we've got this list exactly as we just saw in the console. And now we have these test pairs. We can loop through each one of the pairs and then loop through all of the moving average combinations. So we can type for pair name in test pairs with a P on the front of pair name. It's not quite going to work yet, as I'm sure you've seen. We need to make another couple of changes. The first one is we need this I pair here to come out and actually be inside our loop. So it's set for each of the pairs. And the other thing, of course, is we need our price data creation to be inside the loop as well. I have to say I don't quite like it that we're doing price data equals and then equals again here. We should really put this into its own function, but for now it's okay. Should delete the price data then from here and delete all this space here. And last but not least, let's add a few values onto the moving averages. So we've got a few more to test. So we should be up and ready to run there. A couple more things I'd like to do is inside the evaluate pair is just to comment out this print because we don't want to see it with every line. But inside the processing of the results, we do want to do something. We're going to save our final results to a pickle and call it ma underscore test underscore res dot pkl. And last but not least, we'll print the final data frame dot shape so we know how big it is. And we'll print the sum total of all the trades we've had in the process of doing the simulation. And that should, I say, holding my breath, be all we need. Actually, no, what we can do here is we can print the pair name as well. Okay, we're about ready to run. I have to confess, I've checked this quickly and, and edited it out because I'd forgotten down in the main to make sure that we had run set to go again. So please do that. And now we can go into the console and we can actually run the simulation and have a look.
So we can see that it's running pretty quickly considering the amount it's having to churn through for all the combinations. I'm going to pause this and then come back when everything's run. Okay, so that seems to have run. And we have 630 rows in our data frame, which means in total we tested 630 combinations of moving average crosses. And we've actually got a total of nearly 70,000 trades out of that as well. Back into the code, we can see that we've got an MA test res.pkl, which is available for us to analyze. And that's something then that we'll be doing in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed that one and seeing just how easy it is really to set up pretty big tests of a, of a certain strategy. Uh, any comments, questions, welcome as always below the video on YouTube. Otherwise, see you in the next one.